Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to calculate a moving average, also called a rolling average, in Microsoft Access. Today's question comes from Wendell in Williamsburg, Virginia, one of my Platinum members. Wendell asks, can you show me how to calculate a moving average in Access? Well, of course I can. Let's see how. Now, in preparation for this video, I just earlier today did a moving average video in Excel. Now, in case you don't know, a moving average is just looking at the previous number of periods. For example, you could do a five-day average where you say, look at those five days, then look at the next five days, then look at the next five days, and generate an average for each period of the previous five days or seven days or 10 days or whatever you want. They use this all the time, for example, in the stock market, calculating the previous 30 days moving average. Now in Excel, it's super easy. You just come right here, because you can't do them for these days, right? You come right here and you say equals average, and then the previous five days, and then press enter. And then when you auto fill this guy down, all right, it gives you, and we're gonna ignore these errors, right? It gives you a moving average. All right, right there, see that? Average of, the, of that cell and the previous four. So it's five day moving average. Now this is super easy to do in Excel because in Excel you can see right here, here's the previous five days. Okay. In Access, it's a little more tricky, but it's still not that hard to do. Let's see how to do it. Okay. First up, some prerequisites. I want you to go watch these two videos first if you don't know how to do this stuff. Calculated query fields. That's where you take a column and a query and you make it based on some other values, right? And the DLOOKUP function. If you don't know how to use DLOOKUP for sure, go watch that video. We're going to use another function today that's related called DAVERAGE to calculate a moving average. But DLOOKUP is its close cousin and it's a lot easier to understand DLOOKUP first. Then move into the other D functions. There's DAVERAGE, DSUM, DCOUNT, DMAX, DMIN. But DLOOKUP is like the granddaddy of them all. So go watch that video if you haven't yet. Okay, so here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free download from my website. You can go grab a copy if you want to. But what I'm going to show you today really doesn't matter. We're just going to make a new table anyways. Now, I will start out also by telling you that we're going to do a standard moving average. There's also something called an exponential moving average, which smooths out the average even more, and it gives more consideration to recent data than old data. But we're just going to do a standard moving average in this video. If you want to see the exponential one, give me a comment, send me an email, let me know. And if enough people are interested, I'll do a video on that too. Okay, so we don't need the main menu for this one. Let's create a new table. And we'll just create a simple table that's got an ID field, it's got a date, and it's got some value. So we've got the ID, that's an auto number. Do you need that? No, it's a good idea to have it, but you don't need it. Okay, my date. That'll be a date value. You can't use the word date there for a field name. Remember that, it's a reserved word. Don't just use the word date. That's why I always have to put my date in front of it. Okay, and then my value, whatever that happens to be, whether you're doing um, stock prices or, or, or sales or whatever. In fact, I believe Windows doing COVID test results. So we'll, we'll get more into that in the extended cut. Okay, and I'll save this as just my T, my table. Doesn't really matter. Primary key, sure. There we go. Let's go to data sheet view. Let's put some sample data in here. Okay, we got one, one, and a value. I don't know, $10. One, two, some other value, 15. And so on. I'm gonna put like 10 days worth of data in here. Okay, there we go. I got from January 1st to January 10th and some values. Now, let's close this down and let's go over and make a query. Create, query design. Let's bring in that table, my T. All right, and I'll bring in the star so I can see all the values. Now for a calculated field here, let's calculate the average of the my value field. Let's just see them all first. So we'll call this X and that's going to be the D average, D-A-V-G. Let me zoom in so you can see that better. Shift F2, D average, all right. What am I averaging? I'm averaging the my value field, that's my currency, from my T. All right, close that up just like it is. Hit OK. And then we're going to save this. I'll call it my queue. Let's call it moving 
view. I don't want to have to rename it. This is going to be our moving average query. Okay. And then run it. And there you can see there's 12.3. So if I added all these up and divided by 10, I should get 12.3. And yep, a quick check with calculator says that's right. Now that's just the average of all of them. Okay. And it's putting it in every single row. What do I want to do here is I want to check and say, okay, take this guy. Okay. And I want the average of the five items, the five entries before you. So basically I'm going to say, give it to me where the date is greater than five days ago and less than or equal to today. All right. How do I do that? Let's go back to design view. And again, I'll zoom in down here, zoom in. All right, we're going to put a criteria on here. Criteria is my date is greater than, now this is going to be an actual date value put in here. So I have to enclose it inside of the little hashtags there, the octothorpe, the number sign, whatever you want to call it. All right. And my date minus five, that's five days ago. Remember in access, one day is equal to one. Right, five days ago would be five days ago, so it'd be minus five. Okay, and and if you don't know this little ampersand stuff, that's called string concatenation. I probably should have put that in the prerequisites, huh? There, I'll add it to the list now. I assume if you do the other two, you know concatenation. That's where you put two strings together with a little ampersand sign. All right, so we're greater than my date minus five. Finish by enclosing it with the other pound sign, right? And my date is less than or equal to hashtag and my date and close it up. All right, see that? So give me the D average of my value from my table where my date of the current record is greater than five days ago and less than today or less than or equal to today. All right, hit okay. There it is. All right, let's save it and then run it. And there you go. Now, what's going to happen here is this first one is only going to be that value. It's going to, because it's looking for five days ago and then averaging it with just the one, right? So the average of just the number 10 is number 10, right? Now, here we get the average of these two. All right. This one's going to give you the average of those three, four. And the first one you can actually get five results for is that. And it quick shows that is correct. Okay. And if you want to format these, design view, format this as currency, right click, properties, format, currency. Should be in the drop down. Nope, it's not currency. Sometimes it doesn't show up in the drop down. All right, run it. There we go. And see, sometimes it doesn't even allow you to do that when you got a calculated field. Sometimes you have to also put this guy inside of the format function. Format that whole thing, comma, as currency. That should do it. Let's see. There we go. It's weird. Sometimes the query properties don't give you the right format in here. Now, this is an easy way to calculate a moving average if you have concurrent days, if you don't have any gaps in here. Okay. But what if you do have gaps in there and you want to check the past five days? Let's say you're doing weekdays, you're doing the stock market, then obviously Saturdays and Sundays, you're not gonna have any data. So you have to check the previous five entries, not necessarily the previous five days. How do you do that? Well, I'll cover that in the extended cut for the members. If you want to learn more in the extended cut for members, 25 minutes long, I'm gonna show you how to calculate moving averages if, you're, if you've got gaps in your dates. Okay, so if you're missing like one three, one four, you know, you're missing your weekends, it won't be an issue. I'll show you how to count the previous X number, five number, whatever of entries, not necessarily dates. Okay, then the uh, the actual original question was from uh, one of my platinum members who uh, is doing positivity testing for COVID. So he wants to be able to look at, you know, the previous X number of days positivity rates, calculate you know, the actual positivity, get a moving average of that. And then I'll show you how to take that value and put it on a form so you can see the most recent results 
on the forum. That's all covered in the extended cut. Like I said, 25 minutes long. Uh, silver members and up get access to all the extended cut videos. Gold members can download these databases. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.